My name is Linton Kwesi Johnson. I was born in uh, Jamaica in a rural village called Chapleton in Clarendon, 1952. Um, I attended um, elementary school in Jamaica and I attended Tulsil Secondary School in this country and then later on I went to um, Goldsmiths College, University of London, where I did a degree in sociology. Oh, I've got many occupations. Um, freelance journalist, broadcaster, recording artist, um, company director, um, a bit of jack of all trades, master of none. Because I was a, uh, as a black youth growing up in, in, in this country, I was, I, it was part and parcel of my experience. Um, the experience of racial oppression, um, the experience of being marginalized, the experience of being persecuted uh, by racist police officers, the experience of being put in um, low streams in school and not given the same equal opportunity for learning as other kids. Those were the things that motivated me, my sense of, of injustice as a youngster. Certainly the biggest event in the life of um, the black communities in this country was the New Cross fire that happened in, 19, in January 1981 when Yvonne Ruddock was celebrating her 16th birthday um, at 439 New Cross Road in southeast London when some racist, some fascists, through an incendiary device through the window of the house which resulted in a fire in which 13 young blacks lost their lives and 26 were seriously injured. I think that was the most significant event in the, in the collective life of black people in this country. Well, the Black Panther movement was a, um, a black power organization that um, emerged in this country in the late 60s, early 1970s, and uh, modeled itself on the ideas of the American Black Panther Party. And they were an organization, basically, who were struggling against racial discrimination, struggling for rights for black people, and struggling against um, police brutality and murders that were taking place in America. And we were going through similar experiences in this country, and so we started a, they started an organization called the Black Panther Movement. And the slogan of the party, the organization, was Black Power, People's Power. And basically, it was involved in campaigning for around issues of education, um, employment, um, justice in the courts, and uh, against uh, police brutality. I supported the ideas of the Black Panthers, which is basically that you had to organize yourselves to change your situation. You couldn't just sit back and hope that somebody would do something for you. You had to get together with people who were in the same position as you, who were suffering from the same kinds of injustice as you, and have a common cause and, to, and do something about it. We achieved a lot because we helped to transform people's consciousness. We helped people became, become aware of their um, situation and that, that, they could, that they were not powerless, that they could do something about it, that they could organize themselves, mobilize themselves, um, protest, agitate, um, um, and, 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 and try and tra transform their situation. And we helped to raise the consciousness of a lot of young people about who they are and gave them the, the basis for understanding who they are in the, in, and, and, in, and why they were where they're at in the world, to locate themselves in the world, basically. Well, like all movements of those kinds, once they've served their purpose, they sort of, um, you know, they, they kind of fizzle out. Um, and the Panthers had served its purpose and, and began to fizzle out. With the shift in politics, in the politics uh, in this country, black people, it was no longer um, about simply about color. It, was a, it, it, it became a struggle for class. It became a class struggle. So we became a part of a working class movement instead of a black power movement. And, you know, we, we um, saw, we re re realized that we had um, um, things in common with white working class people and that 
we, you know, we were basically in the same situation and, and that we had to join forces and, and be in solidarity with, with each other. So we shift from the, from, the, from the politics of race to the politics of class. The youth of today are, not, are, are no different from the youth of my generation, really. Um, we, had, we, had, we had gangs, um, we had knives, there were stabbings. Um, but um, I think the significant difference is, is that um, we were more politicized. Um, we were more driven by ambition because our parents had come from this country, um, come to this country in order to seek a better opportunity for themselves. And uh, so we made the, the, the most of the opportunities that we had in terms of education and so on. And we were, we were uh, more politicized. Um, we refused to tolerate the things our parents tolerated, um, although they did so reluctantly because they, they had to put up with things when they arrived in this country um, that they wouldn't have tolerated under different circumstances. But they didn't have the freedom to do, any, to do um, as much about it as, as my generation did. Uh, because, you know, we had no responsibilities. You couldn't simply, if you were a, a parent, you couldn't simply walk off uh, a job every time you were racially abused. But my generation, we didn't have s s um, those considerations and we rebelled against um, racial oppression. Um, the second thing, the most significant difference, I think, is that with the gangs and the knives, there was less stabbing incidents when I was a youth. We would, you know, guys would cut other guys, you know, to warn them not to mess with them. You would cut somebody, or very rarely or occasionally you would stab somebody, but you wouldn't. Nowadays, all the, the what they do, the youths nowadays, they don't cut, they stab. Secondly, um, we didn't have the availability of guns um, that young people now seem to have available to them. Um, um, in some in some quarters, I know that to get a gun is one of the easiest things. You know that wasn't that wasn't the case when I was a youngster. Thirdly, um, we weren't living in the same kind of a materialist-driven world. The consumerist ethos that dominates um, society now wasn't around when I was a youngster, and that 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 consumerist ethos, um, you know of the latest Nike, the, the latest trainers, the latest um, what, whatever, um, um, iPods and, and so on. They weren't around in, when I was a youngster. Um, so a lot of this consumerist ethos has been driven by the revolution in new technologies. Um, and so the young people now are growing up in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, um, an environment of instant gratification. I must have this and I must have it now kind of mentality, which wasn't around, certainly it wasn't around when I was a youngster. But by and large, um, young people today um, are not, not, not that different from when I was a youth.